And around that time, the Olympics roll around again. The Sarajevo Winter Olympic Games. And I'm watching them on TV. And I saw this little guy, he's about five foot one. He must have weighed 115 pounds soaking wet. And this little 18 year old kid wins a gold medal in figure skating, Scott Hamilton, right? When I saw little Scott Hamilton win that gold medal, he gave me hope. I said to myself, well, that little guy can do it. I can do it too. I'll be in the next Olympics no matter what. It's a done deal. I just got to find a sport. <laughs> now, is that realistic, guys? I'm here to tell you that if you believe in your heart that it's possible, and your attitude is, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make that dream come true, then it is realistic. I went to the library, got to do some more research. I'm looking at the list of all the summer sports. It took me five minutes to realize, man, you got to be some kind of a super athlete to do any of these things. There's no way. You've got to be able to jump over houses or lift cars or run 100 miles an hour. I can't do any of that stuff. I got a little depressed. And then I started looking at the list of the winter sports. As I was looking at that list, I started thinking, you know what? I, I, I'm about to put together a plan here for the next four years. It probably would make sense to base the plan on my strengths. My strength is not athleticism. My strength is perseverance. I'm bulldog, remember? <laughs> so I figured, hey, I've got to find a sport that's so tough, a sport's got so many broken bones in it, there's going to be a lot of quitters. Only I won't quit. That's it. That's my whole plan. You too can go to the Olympics. Just don't quit. <laughs> so now I'm looking for tough sports. Ski jump, bobsled, luge. I live in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Hot, humid, flat, sticky Houston, Texas. There's no skiing over there. I never skied before, so forget ski jump. That'd have been suicide, right? And, and who are you going to find four other nuts, or three other nuts in Houston that want to do the bobsled? <laughs> you got to go to Jamaica for that. <laughs> <laughs> so luge, I figured I can do that one by myself. And along the way, I realized that, gosh, you can't do anything great by yourself. You, you need to develop some leadership skills to build a team, and through that team, you can build, you know, you can do something great. Because I was going to need a lot of help. I was going to need financial help, flying all over the world, learning the sport. I was going to need spiritual help. When I was having a bad day at the track, I needed people to tell me, hey, you can do it, we believe in you, come on. I was going to need medical help, too. <laughs> yeah. So how do you attract people to your cause? How do you do that? How do you enlist people to your cause? Leadership 101, man, it's real simple. You got to be passionate, passionate, where people know that you're on fire for that mission, and you have to be a person of integrity somebody they can trust. If they can trust you and they know that you're passionate about the mission, you stand out like a sore thumb and everybody's looking for somebody like that to follow. And they'll follow you. They will. They will. He goes, well, hang on. Before you come to Lake Placid, you need to know two things. Number one, if you want to do it at your age, you want to do it in just four years, it's brutal. Brutal. Nine out of ten people quit. <laughs> when he said that, I started smiling. <laughs> wow, this works right into my plan. This is perfect. <laughs> So what's the second thing? He goes, expect to break some bones. He'll go, great, great. He got real quiet on the other side. He goes, what's wrong with you, man? I thought you were going to break some bones. Are you nuts? I said, look, man, I hope it's 10 times harder what you're telling me. I hope it's 100 times harder. Because the harder it is, the easier it is for me. Because I'm not a quitter. See? That was my only chance, guys. It's my only chance. I was just hoping it, was, it had to be hard enough so the good guys are going to quit. But I don't think he understood. I think he probably thought I was just a cocky Texan or something. Because he goes, all right, Hoss, let's see what you can do. Come on down. Click. Nice me up. Now, what if I had taken that first no? Hmm? When he laughed at me? That had been the end of the story. It would have totally changed my life. Next time somebody laughs at your dream, you're just talking to somebody that doesn't believe as much as you do. Move up. Move up to somebody who's got more. It's true. Class classes, 15 guys, every day there's a couple less showing up. And they all had great reasons for quitting. Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it's too far away. Oh, I miss my family. Oh, I don't like the luge. <laughs> I didn't like luge either. I was killing myself out there. First two years, I was crashing four out of five times. Four out of five. But the third year, I went from crashing four out of five to crashing one out of a hundred. I figured it out. See? And by then, there's nobody left. No competition. <laughs> then? Now that guy told me 9 out of 10 people quit luge, he's right, 9 out of 10 people quit luge, but he didn't tell me the whole story. 9 out of 10 people quit everything. 9 out of 10 people quit sales, 9 out of 10 people quit business, 9 out of 10 people quit medical school, 9 out of 10 people quit on their dream way too soon. 
Most people don't, as soon as they face a little opposition, a little challenge, they talk themselves out of it. Nine in ten people don't give themselves the, the, the time to learn the skills that they'll need to reach that dream. So if you, whenever you go into anything new, if you'll go in with the attitude that quitting is not an option, I'm going to figure this puppy out and I'm going to do it, I'm going to win, it's a done deal. If you go in with that attitude, give it a little time, you'll learn the skills and you'll be in the top 10% because 90% of people quit from under you. And then that's when everybody starts calling you lucky. And that works. Now the difference between wheel training and ice training it's the same difference like uh, walking and skating. There's no traction on the ice. It's terrible. Now the luge track's almost a mile long. It's about three quarters of a mile long. About 15, 16 curves. And they start you off at the bottom. Everybody thinks you start at the top. No, that'd be murder, right? No, they start you at the bottom, like on curve 10, and you're going about 20 miles an hour. And you're just bang, 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 bang. I mean, nothing seems to work when you're first learning. And you just crash, 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 crash. And then finally you figure it out. So as soon as you figure it out, coach moves you up a couple of curves. Now you're going, you know, you're going 30 miles an hour. Well, 30 miles an hour, gosh, there's no time to think. Everything's so fast. Crash, 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 crash. Figure it out. Move you up a couple of curves. Now you're going 40, right? And you literally crash your way to the top. I mean, you do, right? <laughs> it, it, it takes about 100 runs. If you're pretty good, it takes about 100 runs to get you to the top. Now you made it to the top, well, big deal. Now that just means you can drive a car, but you can't go and drive an Indy yet, right? So you have to perfect. You have to get it right. It's like you just learn a, 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 a brand new phrase to, to tell somebody about the business, but you haven't, you know, it's not yours yet, right? You haven't got the nuances yet, and you just need to practice, practice, practice. Hey, it may not work out the first 10 times, but it doesn't matter. You just keep on keeping on, and you perfect, and eventually it, it, it does become yours, and it starts working.